go to the game strategy and I'm just going to show you um, how it works. So offensive zone possession offense is where we start. And then when we lose the puck, what do we do? Well, we need to get the puck back. So that's the offensive zone exit kill. We kill the opponent's exit. We don't want them to come out with, with the puck. Um, now, they will eventually succeed sometimes and they will chip it out. So the third, uh, the third phase is that we will have a quick counter, quick neutral zone transition and re-entry. Um, if the opponent succeeds and skates out with the puck and start their attack, we want to have a rush denial. So we want to deny their rush. And the main principle was we don't want them to ever uh, come over our blue line with possession. So first defend the red line and be very active with our surfing and the back check. And if we don't get them by the red line, we want to be extremely aggressive on our blue line. So the only option they have is to chip it in. Uh, so once they chip it in, what is it now? Well, now we are retrieving the puck in our zone. And so, again, clear principles. What do we do? What does number one do? Number two, number three, number four, number five, when we retrieve the puck. Um, and we were ready for a lot of chips. You will see videos of the practice, how we practice retrievals all the time, because most of the time, most of the time, uh, unless we played, obviously, United States, which was a different story. And, and Finland, Finland at times got some possession entries. Uh, but most of the teams were forced to chip it in. And then once we get the puck in our zone, well, we got to exit the zone with possession. And we had clearly defined what we want, uh, where we want our players. And then obviously one of our biggest strengths was uh, entering the zone with possession and getting a scoring chance. And now we are back in the offensive zone. And I have to say again, this way, it was very, very easy to do video, to judge our performance, to break up our performance, to have drills for each of those segments, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, um, have clear philosophies, clear strategies for each of those segments, and also it dictated absolutely what kind of skills we have to work on. So I was always the guy that started with the skills, then I went to individual skill, individual tactics, then to small team tactics, then to team strategies, and so on and so on. And with Daryl, we have to turn it around. We like, first of all, let's have a philosophy, overall philosophy. What kind of a team do we want to be? If somebody comes to the ring, in five minutes, they should know that Czech Republic is playing. That's how visible it should be. And uh, from there, you go, okay, well, what does it mean possessing the puck? So what do we do in the offensive zone? What do we do when we lose the puck? What do we do on the re-entries? How do we deny the rush? And what does it mean on our transition from the rush denial? When the puck is uh, dumped in the corner, or behind a net, what does it mean for number one, number two, number three, number four, number five, and have a clear understanding where everybody's going. And then obviously on the entries is the same thing. And once I, we started doing that, it's not only that it determines the skills that you have to work on, it also selects the team for you because not everybody can play like this. Not every girl is able to jump into the rush, join the rush, be a defenseman, and yet be maybe F1 on the forecheck. Not every girl can, uh, uh, you know, backcheck and uh, then be F3 and or F4 or F5. Or when she has the puck and she has two people on, on her, she, gonna, she cannot get rid of the puck. She has to protect it, maybe put it between her legs and uh, pop it to somebody else who is supporting her. Not everybody is made for that. So once we had the philosophy, we also had the strategy, we also had the skills, and it selected the team for us. I'm just going to go through one segment, and that's the offensive zone. Everything else is we would be here for six hours. But um, 
Any questions? Thomas, in your approach, I'm curious, you're telling us a lot and you're telling the girls a lot. How much asking went on, questioning from your point of view and getting them to give you answers? Uh, first, first it was um, me explaining and uh, helping them understand how I see them as players and as people and asking them if that's something they they see as well or if they see it differently. That was first. Like first I was talking a lot and as the time went on, they were they were running the show more and more in terms of uh, hey, where do you need to be here? Oh, I forgot I gotta be here. Hey, what's what's our philosophy? Oh shit, I gotta keep the puck here. Uh, so I of course you we teach the philosophy first, so first it's more centered around the coaching staff, but as they got a hang of it, and as I tried to understand and start to play the game, uh, it was more turned around and it was more questioning them and them giving us the, uh, the answers. And a lot of the times was, you know, I don't understand. I, I've never played like this. In, in our team, we play like that, and this is different. So a lot of explanation goes into that. Hey, if you go behind the demon, you're going to create some space and time for you. They will drop it to you. Now you will have more options. So a lot of this was a very uncomfortable for everyone, including the coaching staff, because I had to teach the coaching staff the same thing. They didn't never coach like that before. Does that answer your question, Wally? Yeah. 